Peace and love, ladies and gentlemen. It's your host with the most, Kush Tucker, coming live and direct in full effect with my co-host. Mike L. Peace and love, everyone. And our special guest today is Shakira, my longtime friend. Yeah, slash neighbor. Yes, yeah, slash neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> We've known each other for oh, probably over a decade. For sure. Sh- yeah. <laughs> I'm, mm. I'm really blessed to be here. Thank you guys for having me. I love all your other shows. Uh, oh, thank, thank, I you. Watched thank you. Thank you. Support. Can I tell y'all my favorite? Yeah. So my favorite one is when you had the guy here that um, he worked at the morgue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like that, that was mad Jamal. funny. Uh, yeah. Brother Jamal. Yeah, yeah, Brother Jamal. Brother Jamal. He was that um, episode was very funny, and I was just laughing the whole time and just taking on all the information also that Good, you guys yeah. provided. And yeah, that was one of my favorite episodes. Uh, nice. You. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, definitely, well, definitely. definitely. And thank you for being here. Yeah. We really appreciate your presence. No problem. And coming here to tell your story today, y'all. We're gonna be talking about um, dealing with grief. And losing a child. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Grief. Grief as a 34-year-old. So I'm 34. Like, back in the day, you know, you experience grief. You lose friends. You probably yeah. lose a grandparent. And um, I can say experiencing grief um, with losing my son, my first child ever, uh, it's different. When you're losing friends and you're losing a grandparent or cousins, you know, family members, it's, you know, life goes on, but this type of grief, it kind of hits you differently. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it, it lingers. It's, um, it feels unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It feels like a dream still. And it's, Four years in, I believe. Yeah, twenty four years in right now, and it still yeah. feels like a dream and feels unreal. Can, can we back the audience up to know what happened? Yes. So, um, I'll just start like when I first got pregnant. How about that? That's fine. So, yeah, that's that's fine. Wherever that's you perfect. want to start. So I got pregnant, and I had a healthy baby boy, April 6, twenty sixteen. At 9.35 in the morning, healthy. Oh. Like passing all his hearing tests, passing all the cry tests. Yeah. And um, I raised him and he was thriving. He was in school from he was six months. Well, no daycare, preschool. From yeah. he was six months. And, <clears throat> you know, he had his first birthday, he had his second, he had his third. And after a little bit like three months after his third birthday, um, he had a seizure. Um, actually, before the seizure, he like my family and friends would like voice certain things mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. him. That they and were getting aware of. Getting like making saying. me aware, like, you know, like why he does like why he don't chew his food. You know, and I'm a first time parent, so mm-hmm. Like, I'm appreciating these things, so I'll take these things back to a doctor. I'll take him to the doctor, like, right away. Mm -hmm. Or voice them at his wellness check. Yeah. And I'll be like, you know, um, he falls a lot. These are some symptoms before he got diagnosed where I was um, voicing it to the doctors. And so he This is before the seizure? Before the seizure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll voice to the doctor at his wellness check, like, he falls a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm looking for answers. I'm not a doctor. No, I, you know, this is my first kid, so I'm, I don't really know. I'm just going to voice it to you, and you let me know. So, they, so I remember the doctor telling me, like, you know, um, can you wait until he's, like, five or four and a half? This, he was three, three and a half. Um, can you wait till he's like four and a half and then we can run special tests to see, yeah. but we won't really know because kids are always clumsy. Correct, correct. That's what exactly. he told me. So I'm like, okay. So a little, you know, I wasn't thinking nothing. Um, he was drooling a lot um, and he's three and a half. So he already have all his big kids teeth. Yeah, stuff. correct. And Got molars and stuff. Yeah. So um, I voiced that to the doctor and it was just like, oh, he's teething. And you like you can't be teething at three. Uh, yeah, nah, not at three. Yeah, not at no three. Not yeah. at no three, right? Yeah. So, um, 
I kind of, I took that, I'm like, okay, he's stealing. So when the, his teacher would ask me, like, you know, he's stealing, I'm like, oh, I, took, I asked the doctor about it. They say mm-hmm. he's teething. And then she just gave me this look like, hmm. So, you know, I'm a first-time parent, so I'm really trusting yeah. in the doctors. No, to, I mean, that's the most you can do, really. Yeah, trusting in the doctors, trying to, at least I'm asking and I'm bringing my son so you can. No, you're staying him. responsible. Yeah. You're, not, you're not a doctor, I'm so not a doctor. you're not stepping out your bounds. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> so uh, probably about two weeks after I took him to the last doctor appointment, mm-hmm. um, he had a seizure one night. I just heard him fall out of the bed, and I went there, and I was like, what's going on? So then I caught the ambulance, and they mm-hmm. came in. They said, you know, it was a seizure. Um, we can, You should take him to the hospital. So we went to the hospital, the children's hospital, and um, I just remember us in this room, me, my partner at the time, and my son, and all these nurses in there, and it was like, what happened? I'm like, he had a seizure, and then I'm telling him all the other things about, you know, he's been falling a lot, he's yeah. been drooling. Correct. And they was like, okay, well, we're going to get a brain scan right away or yeah, whatever. Yeah, for sure. So they did the brain scan, and, you know, they came back, like, hours later, like, um, we're going to put him in the ICU, and basically we see something there but we can't confirm until we get a MRI or something like that yeah so um we have to wait like four hours for the MRI and we're in the ICU and the ICU is kind of like when now that I think about it you know it's really not a good thing that's just like when someone is needs to be watched by a nurse correct correct 24 7 and it's, it's not really a good thing you know so um so they did the mri and then they told me that oh we need to transfer you to this other children's hospital that um basically that this is what they look into. This, I feel you like they, yeah. they, they specialize in they that. Special, right, okay. they specialize in it. So um, we went there, and that's when they brought me into this room, and they told me that my son, four years old, R3, R3, R3 probably. Sorry, I get like mixed up with the, um, the ages. But um, my son have like three months to live, that he has like a rare brain cancer. Um, it's called DIPG, diffuse and citric. I can't really but say it. You say it, but um, I know it stands for DIPG, and um, it's rare. It's a rare cancer where your healthy brain cells. It's a mm-hmm. it's a DIPG is a brain cancer. Okay. okay. It's in your brain, and um, it's when you have healthy brain cells. And also non healthy brain cells, and they kind of like they're combined, so okay. it's not easy for them to go in, it's inoperable, so it's not easy for them to go in. They can't separate anything, yeah, yeah, I get you, yeah, without like maybe taking away motor functions or something like Definitely. that. It's, it's not to, like a tumor because a tumor you can isolate and, and get out. They call it a tumor, though. They call it, it a tumor? tumor? It's a brain. It's a type of brain tumor, but it's just inoperable. Okay. So it is a tumor. Like they just can't cut that out. Yeah. Because it's, like it's too binded to the brain. To the healthy. Okay. To the, the healthy cell. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just not, you know, you know, you know how some tumors you like, you have your unhealthy ones here and then you have your healthy ones there. They know where to go. Depending on the lobe of the brain. Yeah. It's yeah. going to depend on the region. Yeah. yeah. So they told me he has that, and that's just when my whole life changed. And Absolutely. It was just... And they told that's, you the time and everything? Flipping your reality upside down. They said three months. They told me three months to live, and they told me that I had, like, a choice. If I wanted to give him an extra six months, mm-hmm. I can do a um, radiation treatment. Mm-hmm. And... um we we did that. Oh, that's beautiful. So it gave him uh, nine months. You gave him nine months. Yeah. Okay. So he that's did. Beautiful. He was able to live for nine months. Um, I'll say, out of those nine months, um, two of them was like the hard ones where yeah. he's declining and 
he need he can't do things for himself or he's just really not the same. Correct. Yeah. But um the seven months mm -hmm. he lived the best life. You know, and he's yeah. happy and he like a normal four year old yeah. little boy. And he didn't really he didn't know he was sick, so Yeah. Or just battling that. It, like we made it kind of fun for him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But that's the beauty of children. No, that's the beauty of they it. don't always have the same perception we have of things. Definitely. Yeah. And it's probably good that you didn't try to break it down to him and all that. Right. And just let him enjoy his time. And you that way you can enjoy y'all time together. Yeah. It, w it was hard, though, because I just remember times where <clears throat> I'm, like, just breaking down. Like, just looking at him play and be happy. So... And I remember times where, you know, people just, you know how you have your kid with you and mm -hmm. you having fun and you're out and about. And people be like, oh, my God, like, your son is so handsome. He's so yeah. sweet. And yeah, he's a handsome like, little boy. Thank you. Like, you know, like, he is battling cancer, though. But you would never know. Like, so I just yeah, made right. it my priority to let them know, like, you know, he's battling brain cancer. And thank you for at least seeing yeah. the joy that he have right now. Because yeah. it might not be for long Correct. based on what the doctors yeah. said. So, um, yeah, that was just, it wasn't always easy. And I know he would, like, hear me say it, like, you know, you have cancer. But he never really asked, like, why are we at the doctor so much? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, what's going on with me? So um, I know he probably just heard me at least say it to other people. But he never even told like none of his friends like you know how like kids be talking yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. no nah, definitely oh, kids talk on the playground cancer or my mom yeah yeah like he never even said those things that's but good though he kept his his consciousness in a, naturally in a, in a bright light yeah you know he didn't ask questions he didn't he didn't really understand but i think he had fun like we made it fun when we go to the doctor you know, we'll take his little train. He loved trains, like mm. Thomas trains. Oh, yeah. We'll take his trains and stuff, and he'll just have fun. Like, he's like, I want to go to the doctor. I want to see the doctor, you know, and take his height and his weight and stuff. He, he mm. had fun there. Now, I do have a question. Yeah. This is a, a tremendous circumstance to pass through. Did you have to pass through this on your own, or did you have support? You know, I had support. I had my friends and my family members, and they can only do so much because you know they're working and they have their own yeah, kids. Yeah, correct, stuff. correct. But I really appreciate the time where they're reaching out to me and asking me if I need anything or just bringing their kids over to have play dates with yeah. my son, Shay. His name is Shay, <laughs> Shay Williams. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I appreciate that. So it wasn't automatically all alone. Yeah. Um, as a mother, just knowing that um, where you, where your kid is diagnosed with this um, brain cancer, it feels lonely, and it is lonely. But um, my friends and family, they were um, reaching out and also yeah trying to be there for me. Yeah. Good. Shout out to friends and family for Shout real. To friends and yeah. family for real. You need them in something like traumatic like that. Like that's a tough time, something really to go through right there. Yeah, definitely, and it's just unreal. Yeah, just unreal. Did you um deal with any like grief counseling outside of like your friends and family or? Definitely, and um, my grief counselor. Well, it was with hospice, mm -hmm. the hospice care, because they put him on hospice care um, probably like the last three months. And um, I was in grief counseling probably like two weeks after he passed because I just I just knew I needed help, honestly. Well, at least you're being honest. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just trying to sit in really denial. Yeah, I wasn't in denial. I think that. Um, just by that doctor telling me, you know, three months to live, it made me kind of something click in my head and just, you know, like, oh, uh, all about my son. You know, like, right. I need to make him happy. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm I'm not a person. I don't celebrate holidays or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, the, 
the two years of his life, he didn't celebrate Christmas or Easter or all those things, but I made sure like he celebrated Christmas, this his last Christmas. Mm -hmm. And he loved it. And it was just like a joy seeing his face where he yeah. is um, decorating his tree, you mm -hmm. know, and it, it's something I don't believe in, but I was just like, I want to make him happy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, in these circumstances, there's no rules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah. Up, ain't no yeah. rules. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. No one can say, oh, you shouldn't have done it. No, come on. Right, right, right. Get on out of here. You I feel you went just full yes mode. Yeah. yeah. Like, I was, whatever my baby want, yes. For yes. sure. Yes. Super yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Super yes. And um, it was just hard. Um, so I end up getting him cremated. And I have him in a yearn where that I just keep with me 24-7. Like if I fly out somewhere, mm -hmm. I'll take the yearn with me. So he fly out with me. Hey, yeah. He was, he liked to go places. He liked to fly out too. Like I like we did plenty of trips together and um it's one trip that i wasn't able to fulfill for him because he was already um diagnosed and they told me that he couldn't fly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um he didn't want to go to africa to go meet his grandpa so like one day i'm going to take him to africa actually soon i'm going to take him to africa what and part? i'm going to take this yarn to kenya yeah kenya yeah i'm going to kenya nice so, and well, that sounds like a, a good adventure. Yeah. It's going to be nice. I think two weeks is enough mm -hmm. for me. And I'm just going there to just enjoy and basically just experience Africa. Have you been time. there before? i never been. So okay. it's the first time for me. Right. I've never uh -huh. been out the country. For real, never? Never. So it's just, uh, I thought I could have smiled and seen you go to like Jamaica or something, girl, no, but that's no, not Jamaica. out the country, really, no? I didn't go to Jamaica. No, I feel you. Mm-mm. Wow. I never went to Jamaica. I only, I only go state to state. No, you're feel still you. good. You're yeah. still you're moving still around. Good. Yeah. But yeah, you got to plan that one out. Yeah. You got to yeah. plan. That's that's monumental. That's ceremonial, <laughs> yeah. for real. Yeah. You know, that's real homecoming. No, for real. Mm -hmm. No. Nah. You know what I'm saying? You got to plan that one out. But it's good that it's on your mind. Yeah. You know. I, so I actually already have my ticket and everything. So I'm going. Okay. Oh, no. It's, yeah, it's, it's written in stone. Then. It's yeah. written in stone. I'm taking my son with me. And we just going to experience Africa, you know, for the first time ever. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm excited. Like are you Kenya. only traveling to Kenya or are you traveling around to some other areas? So just Kenya. Okay. Just Kenya. I have um, some siblings there. Okay. From, oh, damn. On my dad's side. Yeah. That's interesting. I never knew that. Yeah. My dad is African. My mom is American. And um, I have siblings in Africa. No, I right. thought your posture is I'm American. You know, straight from South Central, too. <laughs> 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 you probably saw my... If you... You kind of you know, got, like got like a Nipsey Hussle story. Oh, my gosh. It, yeah. Right. So if you probably saw, because we neighbors, yeah. So you know, that was like my stepdad. Okay. If okay. you ever saw my mom with someone else, yeah. My dad been in Africa since. You see, I never knew that because I don't dig I deep three. into stuff. Like right. you know, we kids. I'm like, I just, mm -hmm. I just into That's shit. my friend. Yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's just simple as that. Like yeah. friends, you be like, I'm not digging into like, is yeah. that right. your real dad? Or yeah, not? totally. <laughs> like what you did today, neighbor? Oh, nothing. You know. Oh God. <laughs> I yeah. went through your trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We was not even trash. doing that as kids. No, no, no. I hope they're not doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay a kid. Stay a kid. You know, we're trying yeah. to get to know each other through the trash right. and shit. Through your tra <laughs> <laughs> Just ask them about that. Yeah. You know, simple Just stuff. Wow. No, I like mean, so do you have do, do you have uh, dual citizens yet? Do I? I don't. So I'm I'm just an American. Okay. I'm I just wonder. I just wonder. <laughs> no dual citizenship. American girl. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm just an American girl with American passport. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Oh, me. Yeah. I only ask because there's certain countries that are offering uh, citizenship yeah. to African Americans. I think it's Kenya and uh, uh, Ghana. Yeah, Ghana. Mm. That's what I was trying to think. And, yeah. and I wouldn't mind. One, another one. I Is can't think of the Nigeria? time. Nigeria? No. Think, I don't know. I don't want to. I, I know for sure Kenya, Kenya and, Ghana. and Ghana. Okay. So they like the most like industrial, like technological. Mm -hmm. So you might want to 
We get like why are you there? Right. You see what yeah. the land costs, you know? <laughs> For real. No, it's already in the back of my mind. Like honestly, I mm-hmm. already know. I never been, but I know that. I'll live there probably like for six months out of the year. Yeah. And <laughs> come back here. You know, work my little six months. Yeah. How far does your money go? That's, what do you mean? Because, okay, like we went to Costa Rica, you get five to one. Okay. But then I have a friend that's Nigerian. I don't know if the same, but at one point I know it was like 38 or 51 to one. So he was showing me a house that he built over there. Yeah. And I was thinking half a mil yeah. according to how oh. we live here. Yeah. And he was like, Mm-hmm. Yeah, in Nigerian money, but in American money, because that's what got converted over, it was yeah. like 80000 Right. <laughs> yeah, that's doable, because I yeah. was thinking like, ooh, a half a mil. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, so that's, but I'm saying that's what the value looked like. Yeah, I does. shot, because I was like, ooh, that's nice, two, three stories, mm-hmm. uh, you know, garage and all of that, and half moon driveway. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's got to be at least a half a million dollars. And plenty of land, correct? Yeah, like, yeah. Where you can just build on top of that. Correct. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. He was like, yeah, in <laughs> and, and their money, but in your money it would be this. I was like, yeah. Cool. But like, that's why he was here. Yeah. He was sending money back and buying land and getting stuff built because of making more money here. Yeah. Yeah. It makes more sense. It does. Like, if you can just maintain something out there like that, you'll be winning. Like, <laughs> My homie got some land. He he said he ain't even seen it yet in Africa. Mm-hmm. But he get he got neighbors that got like a cocoa farm. Yeah. So they be making um cocoa butter. Wow. And they send them cocoa butter over and just like, hey man, your land is doing good still, my friend. And you know. Hell yeah. I'm like, man, that's righteous. Like, <laughs> not so. <laughs> got free imported cocoa butter coming to you, like yeah. straight from the motherland. I'm like, dang, that's tight, bro. I'm like, you need to go check on that land though. I do have to go back to a question though. Earlier, you mentioned you don't celebrate any holidays. Is there any reason why? Is it all right if I ask that? That's okay, and it's no reason why. Like I'm not. um, No, it's no type of religion or anything. Mm -hmm. I just don't believe in holidays. Just as my adult self, I grew up um, celebrating them with my mother and my parents and stuff. But just as I turn into my own individual and an adult as a mother. Um, I d- don't really see. I feel like, you know it's your personal it's preference. It's just my personal, yeah. Your partner, right. that's why. I just wanted it, it caught my attention. I was like, yeah. I gotta ask it. Like, <laughs> I'm not Jehovah <laughs> Witness or anything. <laughs> was it because of anything like particular you might have learned about Christmas or like mm. or other Honestly, holidays? No, I just started looking into it as just looking into it. Like I feel like it didn't serve any purpose. Uh, no, for you. me to make it a priority into my life. You know. I feel you. I feel yeah. you. Yeah. I feel you. If if you're into the spiritual parts of it, I guess it can have a certain power, but there are there is consumerism. Yeah. You yeah. know. There is consumerism wrapped up in it too. Definitely. Like for birthdays, yeah. I celebrate birthdays. You know, I go hard for that's your Earth Day, it's the day you're born. But Christmas I'm you know, I don't really knock people that do it. Mm-hmm. It's just my personal preference. Christmas, Valentine's Day. Um, what's that Easter Thanksgiving and all that stuff every day it's like Valentine's Day for me every no, day is you. Christmas for me you know so yeah every day you should be loving every your day people's you or should, loving your lover like yeah, that yeah you like, should show shouldn't, people <coughs> it shouldn't be like you know, consumed to one day out of the weekend. Yeah. You have to one day of consideration. Plan. Yeah, it's like someone's giving you permission to have fun. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. day is the day. You can love them the most today. <laughs> yeah, you better do it today. Do it today. You do it we told tomorrow you. it stops. Right. <laughs> Christmas coming up. What you going to get me for Christmas? Like, no, you know, I'm going to get you something at least once out of the month. And yeah. it don't have to be. I have to get you twenty thousand gifts for Christmas. Yeah. So. yeah, totally. That's a lot of pressure. It's, yeah, it's, it's pressure. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of pressure. pressure. It's a lot of, pressure. It's a lot of yeah. pressure. I think people put that type of pressure on it though. Like it could just be one gift or something, something thoughtful. Yeah. And the people be like, I want a bunch of things. Like, but you don't <laughs> be <doing this. laughs> Yeah, yeah. You can only play with one. You can only play with one at a time. Right. But I need them all. Like <laughs> with an eye shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see it. No, that's real. That's yeah. real. Now that's interesting. So you just arrived at that one day. Yeah, I think yeah, pretty much I was just thinking like I always been that person, a person that thinks and especially when I'm alone, I spent a lot I spent a lot of alone time before I had my son and before basically I got into my 
25, my early 25s. Mm -hmm. I spent uh, probably like three years mm -hmm. just in my own thoughts and reading. Yeah. And just getting how I you. feel personally. Yeah. You know? Yeah, getting <laughs> like, to know you. Not, not um, my generational hand-me-downs are like, oh, we're used to this. And mm -hmm. it was like, what makes me feel nice? What makes, what I believe in? Yeah. You know? Yeah. To authentically be you. Yeah. I feel you on that one. And that's just where it led me. And it was cool. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's some good self work though, especially for your early twenties. For early twenties, right? That's, that's some cold self work right there. Crazy. You know? <laughs> no, I did, but you need that. You need that um self time right there to yeah. really dig in, go inward, because there's so many distractions out here in this world to pull you outside yourself and distract you and yeah. you know, take you off your cue. Mm -hmm. So like, you need that long time for real. A lot of people be running from themselves. True. You know, and it's like you can't. No matter where you go, if you ain't dealt with whatever you dealt with. You can go to Wyoming, wherever. Yeah. Ten buck two. Yeah. <laughs> if you got some issues, just go follow you. Well, yeah. You, know, you, you can't run from yourself. I mean, you can run from yourself, but effectively it's not going to work. Oh, definitely. You know. It's going to catch up to you. It's going to come to light and maybe one of your friends or just something you see. It's just going to come to light. It's going to show itself. Like, yeah. you know, where you just kind of comparing yourself, like, Correct. hey. Now something's going to leak. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. things aren't patched yeah, correctly. Compare and contrast to kill you. Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to. That's like slow that. poison. Yes. I feel like in the mind, it's like a little IV drop, like, bloop. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> just a little a day. It's just a little day. A couple of time, drops a day. You, every time oh you compare God. contrast you yourself know. to somebody or something, like, oh, this person got more than me, or yeah, why are they able to go do that and I can't right now? Well, you ain't playing for it. Yeah, totally. I <laughs> guarantee they plan for it. Yeah, I guarantee. <laughs> you know, there's no Insta. Yeah. There's none of that. There's I'm none sure. of that. Woke them up. Woke them up. I I also want to add how, you know, you can feel like you're doing the right things mm -hmm. so i just want to add how i felt like growing up before i had my son and just knowing he's about to come into this world is i went through this time where i changed my diet and mm -hmm. i started eating clean and healthy and mm -hmm. cook food only and yeah you know just want you to know that you know, you can be doing the right things and tragedy can always just strike. Just because you're doing the right things don't mean that, you know, you won't suffer a loss. And Correct. that's something where I have to come to terms and, you know, and just make peace with. Because it was at points where I was just saying, like, you know, like, you know, I have my son eating so clean and how yeah. can he catch this cancer, yeah. you know, and. It's it's all up to God and No, definitely. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. No, that's real. You hit it you hit the nail on the hell now once you care about talk. Up to God. So like it's certain stuff you can't even like toil over in your mind mm -hmm. or like wrench yourself over, especially when you know you did the best you could. Like you fed your son proper and you fed yourself proper clean food. Yeah. Healthy food. Yeah. Fruits and vegetables. So it's like Fruits and vegetables. Took them out to play. Took them out to, you know, play. like really doing, like just having a, a kid life. So that kind of just like punched me in the face, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of hard. Yeah. Well, because well, you're looking, the natural state is to want rewards for doing right. Uh, yeah. You yeah. know, so. Not totally. And this wouldn't feel like a reward. Definitely not. Definitely. I was, I remember just saying I would be more comfortable with a, um, what is, um, you know, I think like autism, mm -hmm. you know, like a diagnosis like that than a cancer diagnosis. Yeah. Well, that's so like, final. Yeah, yeah, so final. Mm -hmm. So it was just hard and I just had to make peace with all that just... Um, basically saying, like, oh, I did everything right, you know, and I just know that maybe um, one day our, this story can mm -hmm. just, you know, impact people just to be a more present parent. And sometimes I feel like I didn't really um, 
be that voice for my son, for the doctors, to just be like, hey, like just knowing like you have these concerns for your kid, but you're a first time parent and you didn't know that you need to ask. Like, can you just scan his brain? Can you do these scans? But because yeah. I didn't know those things, um, you know, I, I want to be on this podcast today. Just let you guys know that you yeah. can ask for um, you can ask the doctors for certain tests if mm-hmm. you have some type of doubt in you. you Escalate know? it. Yeah, yeah. Escalate, Escalate it. Try to go far. Ask. <coughs> ask. Because yeah. even though you probably don't know, mm-hmm. but just ask. Because yeah. it's there. It's there. So it's like take advantage of your benefits. And right. Do you feel you need to forgive yourself? Um, Definitely, but I feel like I'm on that journey now. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Every day I, I talk to myself and, you know, just forgive yourself. You know, just forgive yourself. You did what you can. And um, at least I gave my son a nice, uh, fun, loving home for the four years he was here. No, definitely. No, you definitely. definitely did. Everything happens for a reason. That's Even if we don't understand it, mm-hmm. you know. Um but you gotta forgive yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. because there's no way to know. Yeah. You know, and even with the doctors, I mean, you can press for stuff, but still, you know, everything is divinely ordered. Yeah. Even if we don't like it. <laughs> everything is divinely ordered, even if we don't like it. No, you know. Probably. So, this has played a pivotal role in your life, though. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it changed. And like you know when you have your kid and you be like yeah in the next 10 years and next five years correct you're know, sure. making plans you're making plans for your kids oh, totally you see them going to high yeah. school middle school right. like you be imagining i wonder what type of Elementary. attitude they gonna give me yeah when <laughs> yeah correct 12 mm-hmm. a preteen or something like what type of sports you gonna put them in like you know what type of after school programs it changed my life where you know i don't really know what's next for me mm-hmm. but um, I know that if I just keep living day by day and just giving thanks for life and health yeah. and strength that being grateful, just being, yeah, just lit. I'm just basically living a grateful life, you know, I feel grateful you. that I'm able to pay my bills. I have a job and I have a car and I might not have, you know, what means the, the, the world to me, my son, but at least I have my life and my strength and my health Correct. that I'm able to do for myself. Correct. Yeah. And you honoring his memory still. Definitely. Yeah. Like I always try to um you know, wear something for him, like his chain or just talk about him at least once or twice a day. It's, yeah. It's it was hard in the beginning, but it's getting better now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no one can tell you when to uh, be done with something like this. You you got to take it at your own pace. Yeah. That way you can. That way, when you do finally let it go, is you let it go in your way. Yeah. That you still hold on to some, but not where it's any weight or any sadness and things of that nature. And that takes time. There's no way to do that quickly. Yeah. Have, yeah. have you guys ever lost someone that just means the world to you? My nephew was killed in 98. He was shot in the back by the police four times. Oh. And it took me forever to deal with this. It wasn't a lot of men in my family. Yeah. So we were really close. He was my nephew, but he was three years older than me. So he'd okay. always been like a big brother. And for the longest time, it didn't really compute because he had never gotten in trouble. He had never been to jail. He had never had any violent stuff. And it just didn't make sense. Um, that he that he you know got killed in this way, it, yeah. so it took me a while to process and just accept like things happen for for greater purposes. Um, where's your real spirituality at? That's what I had to challenge myself with. Yeah, where's my real spirituality at? Where's my real belief in what I say I believe in? So were you a teen at this age? Or? No, I was like in my late twenties. Okay, I was like twenty eight, twenty nine, something yeah. like that. But still, nonetheless, I didn't see it coming. Yeah. And so because I didn't see it coming, it was like, okay, why is this happening? He was a he was a genius kid. He had had a, a scholarship to UCLA at like 14 years old. He was a really smart kid. So you don't expect someone who's not active in anything we would consider in the streets yeah. to have it happen to him, you know. So, 
But eventually I did process through it and realize that, hey, you know what, life goes on and I do miss this person. But, you know, and this all happened for a reason. It, it, it woke me up yeah. mm-hmm. when it happened because it, it was such a shock to the system. Yeah. It woke me up. So I believe these things come as wake-up calls. So I, I try to ask myself now, what what sh- what is this waking me up to in this moment? Yeah. yeah. You know, pain is always in the present. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, pain is always in the present moment. What am I being woken up to right now? True. Maybe I'm running from something else and... This right here is waking me up, yeah. you know. So, and what's the what's the future look like for me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we know you're going to Kenya. Is is that the next biggest thing? That's the next biggest thing. Okay, good. Honestly, that's the next biggest thing. I can't really um, plan, you know, that ahead for mm-hmm. me because it just make me. I have it gets me real bad anxiety. Okay, where I feel you. and to the point where I need to call my therapist and I need to see you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need to talk to you probably like three times a month or something. Mm-hmm. So I try not to think that far advanced. It's the future. Because the future, you're talking about like at least five years, right? You know? no, 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 no. I just okay. meant like I know you're doing Kenya as anything else okay. on the agenda with that. You okay, know? okay. So yeah, just can yeah right now no, have my mind wrapped around where I'm. No, 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 no five year plans. Okay, no five, five year. <laughs> <laughs> you serious minded? Right, I am. <laughs> you so serious minded? I am. But that's good. That's good. Yeah. You, you, I feel like you got an old that's soul. Where you still? Oh, you. I am. Yeah. Even my like siblings, they tell me like, oh, you always act like since I was younger. They'll say I act like I've been here before and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that, you, that you, nature. Yeah, you seem comfortable in yourself. Very comfortable, but no, that's good though. That's yeah. good. Do you feel like this experience like brought you a greater appreciation for time? Definitely. That, cause I never used to celebrate my birth. I never ever celebrated my birthday. I mm-hmm. never felt the need to celebrate myself. Just growing up in general. Um, what? So my first birthday ever, where I celebrated, where I made the plans, where I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm just welcoming, like yeah. come celebrate me for my birthday. It was last year, wow. I turned 33. Mm. That's the first time I ever celebrate my birthday. 33 years old. Oh, for real? For real? Dang. Wow. That's Jesus crazy, number. Right? No, that's that's tight though. That was a good number. That <laughs> that's a good number. Yeah, it's yeah. a good number to yeah. celebrate I didn't on. Even think about it that way. I was just yeah. thinking about it. How you know it took my son to pass away for me to think about. You know, life is. You need to celebrate your birth life. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You, you and yourself. Here to yeah. Celebrate no, yourself totally. being here, totally. still in the present. <coughs> Sorry. Yes, for real. So, it took that time, and so I was. So that's one wake up call. Mm-hmm. Because remember, I was saying something comes out of these things. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it's the reexamination in the pain. Cause that's mm-hmm. that's the I understand what we all go through. It's like I want to yeah. examine it, but it hurts. No, for sure. When it hurts, it's hard to. Examine. Yeah, it's hard to examine it. Hard. But that's I'm, why they say like you know time heals all. Cause as the time passes on, you can kind of analyze that that scar more. Yeah, the like, pain oh, dissipates. Yeah. Yeah, the pain dissipates. Yeah, the so pain dissipates. It's uh, it's literally like the same as like you know when you gash your leg or something like that. And it's hard. It'd be hard to look. If it look real bad, it's hard to look at it. You'd be like, oh, I don't want to look at that wound. you like, oh, my Jesus. Not totally. Because the pain, but as it heals, you'd be like, oh, it doesn't look so bad. Well, looking at the it's wound might bring some of the pain it. back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that too. You know? Yeah, you look at the wound and you kind of remember how much it hurt the first time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your it's mind is powerful. Why did you put your leg that way? <laughs> like, why did Correct. you step on that? Yeah. Correct. Mm-hmm. And you know what? We have a tendency to uh, think preemptively. Mm-hmm. Like, we think we could have whistled instead of wazzled yeah. and that would have changed i don't believe that any longer i used to i used to put myself through the uh rigors of mike why did you do that yeah. why'd you make that choice <laughs> <laughs> you know you could have made that but you couldn't have made the other choice yeah. that's why you made the one you That's-ly did you know yeah. so because you live and you learn you know and you go through you have experiences in life where mm-hmm. it's probably evident that you need to go through just Definitely. so you know what the outcome is. Yeah, totally. And we all want to pick the perfect magical experience because that feels good and safe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that feels good and safe. <laughs> I made it <laughs> out of scratch. Thank you. Mm. you know, but it wouldn't be authentic. Yeah. yeah. You know, how do you really 
how do you rise to the occasion if there's no real test that come in? Oh, mm-hmm. that's true. You know, definitely. So, but you've been rising to the occasion on this. I haven't dealt with this. So I'm. I can't even say I feel you. You know, totally. you get what I'm saying. I haven't yeah. dealt with anything like that. I share with you what I have dealt with, but it's not the same as a child. That's yeah. yeah. You know. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't think nothing's like losing a child. Like I can say I lost homies and stuff, and oh. that's life altering because it's like you're the same age as someone. You be like, dang. I expect someone the same age as me to pass this early, but yeah. it's different from having someone that came from you. Mm-hmm. It's like, I feel like that's a whole different type of loss. That's even different from losing like a grandparent. Yeah. So yeah, young totally. and innocent, you yeah. know. And I remember you losing my grandparents, and it was, she raised me half of the time. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's like losing a mother, you yeah. know. And I remember life goes on, you know, like I had certain days in the first three months where I'm missing her and I wish I I wish I can call her and Mm -hmm. stuff, but life went on and I just continued to live my life. But like this type of trauma that I experienced where I lost my son to a cat. The cancer and I wasn't able to save him or yes yeah, like that's out of your control yes yeah, out of my the, control that's the biggest thing to let go of that power sometimes. that yeah. powerlessness yeah. yeah feeling powerless man this uh and I must add that you know he was put on hospice care and um I decided to do his hospice at the house so we mm-hmm. weren't in the hospital. facility yeah. So we're at our home and comfortable. Comfortable, you know. I'm taking care of him. I'm bathing him. I'm feeding him. He's on a feeding tube, and I'm watching him as he just, you know, decline. And um, a nurse will come by every um, day or every other day. But I don't. It's just crazy how in the moment I was like so strong, and as I think about it now, those memories they haunt me, and I hate to think about them because I'll just be like. Just you really just. Uh, but that's genuine time, now. I mean, mm-hmm. if 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 you place yourself from his perspective, he doesn't know what's happening, Duh. but he knows Mama's there to love you. Yeah, mm-hmm. not f- factual. I'm just telling you from a ma- for, from a man's point of view how you feel about your mama. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Everything's safe because she here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Facts. You, I'm just that's the only yeah. thing I can share with you when I think about this because I've been placing myself into it. Wow, this is a lot, it is, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> not for real. So, I've yeah. been trying to matriculate and say, Well, what would it be like? You're a little boy, you, you don't necessarily know what illness is, yeah. but you don't feel right, yeah. but you do have a smile in your face because she yeah. keeps showing up, mm-hmm. she's and cleaning healthy. you. And I know what a feeding tube looks like. So that's in his stomach. That's got to be kept clean. It's, Down his nose. Yeah. You know, and he's just looking. And with a brain cancer, mm-hmm. um, you it cut it start cutting off certain places where he couldn't talk. He, he couldn't, couldn't swallow. swallow. He I couldn't know. chew. You know, so he couldn't really talk in his last um, weeks and days. And um, no matter how hard he tried, but, you know, he'll be up and... He'll he'll be like, yes, like if I ask him a question. And I just, so I was a nurse assistant. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was raising him, I went to nursing school and I got certified as a nurse assistant. I remember just taking care of the elderly. And like, I feel like God, you know, had me in that type of working field just to prepare me for this. So totally. When it was time for me to for them to tell me like oh you know um you can either stay in the hospital and we have the nurses to help you mm-hmm. or you can go home you know and i'm like oh i can go home because i know how to take care of my son because i yeah. had hospice patients no, older I right. that i was taking care of so i just feel like you know everything really does happen for a reason no nah, then to take care see of now that we're going day. back through yeah. this re- we're like recycling yeah like, you can see he was getting, he was prepared, getting prepared. prepared yeah, yeah totally yeah. for the whole mission for the, the whole time the whole time and i didn't even know you know well that's how it be divinely because the invisible creates the visible yeah so that's why like you know you can make plans but it's really like the <laughs> your higher self is making plans <laughs> on top of them plans yeah you know totally if you want to if you want to hear god laugh Tell them your plans. Yeah. So th- that's just the nature of that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So now now that you see as we circled around, mm-hmm. we, we you can see how everything was set up. You would be yeah. prepared for it. Not that you can ever 
like swallow this and be happy. Yeah. yeah. That's not possible. No, nah, not at all. But just the fact that it's no different than going to sleep. Every night you get prepared for what death is going to be like when you go yeah. to sleep. Mm-hmm. That's the proof that there's a loving God. Yeah. The biggest event in your life is going to be when you get up out of here. Yeah. Yeah. There is no bigger event for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for, for those who are still here, yeah. they, they they still here. But for, for each one of us, that's the next biggest event. But you get to practice it every night when you go to sleep. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying. So to me, that's proof there's that this next big event is so big that you practice it every day until you do it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's love. Nah, it is. That's love. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the proof that 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 all this is divinely ordered, and that even if we don't like it, even if it is super painful, like it's something in it, like that has to be examined. Uh huh. Yeah. You know. So now nah, that's that's remarkable. Mm. Yeah. That's remarkable. I don't really seem like your transformation because like you used to even um, if you don't mind me asking like what was it go, like going through like getting your tattoos removed because you used to have tattoos. Yeah, I'm getting this face tattoo removed, and I remember before I even had my son, and I was going through my spiritual journey before I had him. I mm. always wanted to get it removed. No, I, uh, but I didn't start the process until like through. Probably like a year or two and a half. Mm-hmm. And um, it's been painful. <laughs> it's very painful to get a face tattoo removed, but okay. I'm liking what I see. My melanin got a little bit messed up because um, I'm in the sun, and you're not really supposed to let it show in the sun without sunscreen. But mm-hmm. um, it's been tremendous to see how my face is coming back. Like, I get to see yeah. my face soon. Back to where I was like innocent and yeah, face, black don't crack. You, you ain't got nothing yeah. to worry about. Black don't crack. Yeah, black it's, it's don't all, crack. Black don't crack. No, black don't crack. Nah, it so, don't. Nah, yeah. no, not, not even if you have to get a face tattoo removed. No, it's all. Yeah, it, you, but you, I feel like that's pivotal though, because it's like you was like removing whatever that other, you know, those characteristics were like those transitions. You like, man, yeah. I'm com- you coming into a new you now. A yeah. metamorphosis. Yeah, mm-hmm. metamorphosis. A metamorphosis. Show. Like honestly, if you're not growing up and you're not changing, I, you know, I don't really know what to, to say. Honestly, yeah. I, I mean, I don't you're know not what you're experiencing. Doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, change is the, the only constant. Life. Yeah, yeah, change is the only yeah. constant on earth. That's the only thing that's guaranteed in life is change. Yeah. And you yeah. don't necessarily know what it's going to change too. And, yeah, you good know. or bad. Good you know? or bad. Yeah, and totally. you got to be fit and mentally strong to yeah. even. Like get through it, you know, and it's not easy, but you gotta be like kind of warrior status. No, totally. Yeah. Like warrior monk. Mm. I always mm-hmm. think warrior, warrior monk. monk. Yeah. Warrior <laughs> monk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Warrior. I ain't gonna start no, but I ain't gonna take no shit either. Yeah. Like the bulletproof yeah. monk. You ever <laughs> seen that oh. movie? <laughs> bulletproof, bulletproof monk. No, I haven't. Oh, it's a good old movie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I forgot the out. actors in it. It's the dude that plays Stifler though. Chow Young Fox. <laughs> oh, it's like um, Asian. Yeah, it's Relation? like you got the dude from American Pie. I don't know if you ever watched American Pie. I have. Remember, like the jock dude it's that been plays a minute, Stifler. Yes, he was always I joking around. Oh right, yeah, so he's in the movie. He mm-hmm. plays like the Daniel son. Like he's learning from the bulletproof monk. Uh-huh. And I forgot who the bulletproof monk is. The actor's name. Chow Young Fat. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought he was just saying something. Trying to, yeah, just saying trying shit. to help you out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thought I just made some shit up. Yeah, I did. I thought you were just saying like a Chinese meal or something. Yeah. Like you say, you know, young fat. Like, come up some young guy. No, Asian. I'm like, it's an Asian. But no, that's a good movie though. Like he is dope. Yeah, like yeah. that shit. I wanted to share because um, I write letters to my son, probably like every once in a while. And it just helps me get through this kind of uncomfortable, uncomfortable, lonely state of mind where, you know, like you're not mm-hmm. living for, you're only living for you now. So I want to share a, um, a letter I wrote to him for sure. before Thank we um, go on to, you know, the funny stuff, <laughs> the interesting, funny stuff. Uh, Positively. Like, thank you for sharing it with yeah, us. Yeah, definitely. No problem. And honoring us with that. I thank you. Every now and then, I like to write him a letter and like just give thanks. I feel you on that. Yeah, stay grateful. Give him praise and give him thanks for 
just being your son. Yeah. Well, this experience that, that he gave you is tremendous. Yeah. That's true. So if you, you know, if we take away certain details of it, it's a tremendous experience. You're still here to walk with that power. Yeah. And, it, you know, it was times where it couldn't, I couldn't be here. Like, I would have never been here. Like, just choices I made, just dealing with grief and... Because grief is not easy. No, nah. no, 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 no. It's it's not easy. It's lonely. You know, you might have, you know, friends and family that want to be there for you, but b- because they didn't experience the loss you feel, you can't really relate to, you know, relate Correct. to them. So. Yeah. It's something you have to process yeah. out on your own. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's lonely, for sure. So um, I want to just share this letter, and it would say, it would start off by, you know, it's been three years, five months, and 23 days. And I have been living with this broken heart, and I will never be the same again. But I don't know. I mean, sorry. But I do know I will be okay, although I feel robbed. Intense feeling of sadness, loneliness, and abandonment. I also feel Father God and my son hands wrapped around me, hugging me spiritually. So, your mother is a fighter, and although I have bad days, and I am determined to keep living through these overwhelming struggles I experience on a daily basis due to losing you, um, every, every morning I have to face the fact that you are not physically coming back. You are no longer here for me to take care of. You're no longer here for me to cook for you, teach you, spend time, and play with you. Not being able to be your mother puts tears in my eyes, and I just pray that you're okay up there. And it's 2024 now, and I will continue to pour all that deep, unconditional, protective, present, everlasting love I've given you the four years of your life into myself and that, that's where it ends nice that's good though that's beautiful nah nah for real I, it kind of remind me of like my mom she's really good with like writing paragraphs and all that stuff and i'm like look at me turning into my mother <laughs> i feel you yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was like they commercial be like yeah. honey you're turning into your dad like insurance commercial, commercial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure because she can tell a story honey like well, this will wake you up. In a compelling way. And no, it's compelling words. Nah, totally. This will wake you up. I have all to of this. just be honest, you mm-hmm. know, and it felt better. Like, when I get it out on paper, it kind of make me able to get through the days better, you know, and the just dealing with life. And have you considered a children's book? A children's book? Maybe no. doing a children's book about your, you and your little boy. Maybe so. That would you be know, good. Because it's very, I've been looking at the pictures and everything up here, and it looks co- really compelling. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Not necessarily the circumstances, unless you want, you know, people do do books like that, because other families could be going through the same yeah. ordeal. Yeah. And by sharing it in a children's book, it might it might help the parents more than it helps the children. Right. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh. the parents like, I'm going through this. Yeah. And reading this, someone else went through this. Or it could just be something completely fictional that allows you to keep him alive. Yeah. 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 And just you telling know, all just the a, a mother, A good mother-son storybook. Right. Yeah. Right. You know. I think that would be Not good. saying you have to, but, Yeah, just you give know. me a suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, your story's compelling. Yeah. You know, it's compelling. And, and we meet a lot of people. Everyone deals with these things differently. You know, a lot of times uh, people still in real deep trauma with these things. And naturally, you can't judge anyone for that because you can't tell nobody when to get over some shit. Yeah. I don't know. You know, but but you you doing remarkable. Yeah, thank you. you. And, yeah, <laughs> and we're glad we're meeting you at the point that you're ready to talk. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you know, totally. Thank you know what I'm saying? And we want you to do good on your trip to Kenya. Yeah. Because you know, there's something waiting there for you. Mm-hmm. What is planning behind that look like? Motherland. Like, mm. cause you got to really plan for Kenya. Like, it was just, hey, get the ticket, then get the Airbnb, and then my family there. We're gonna do all the other things. Like, okay, okay, y'all I gonna feel you. 
You already that got like your personal it. tour guides and stuff. Yeah. Does your family know everywhere to sister. go. Yeah. They're younger than me. So I'm my dad. Um, me, my two siblings that live here in America, we're the oldest children mm-hmm. from my dad. Mm-hmm. And then he um, went to back to Kenya and yeah. now he has other kids and they're a little probably like probably like six years younger than me mm-hmm. yeah that's nice though yeah. y'all still within the same age group true oh, y- you know y'all have something in common we have something in common you know yeah they can take you around yeah about to go <laughs> out because um i actually invited my mother she american mm-hmm. so it's about to be you know yeah. really she gonna go with interesting. you. Interesting, yeah. Oh, I, nice. I invited her nice. to come because I didn't want to go by myself. Honestly, it's my first time out the country. Yeah, I haven't seen my dad since I was four. My dad, unfortunately, he passed away in 2020. Though okay. I still keep in contact with my siblings. Oh, no, that's good. His wife. So yeah, I'm like, mom, come with me, and she was like, okay, and now we're about to go out there. Good. <laughs> That's good. That's righteous right there. Yeah, see, to me, this is how it all happens. Mm. Yeah. That <laughs> one thing spurs another thing, spurs another thing, and then now there's a new adventure going again. Yeah. yeah. So there's a new a new rotation in your life. Yeah. New energy is being built. We're about yeah. to go, I don't know, we're about to have some experiences. Definitely. Yeah. I think you're going to have, like, definitely, like, a, a dope spiritual experience out there, too. Yeah. I see that coming for you. That, I hope so. Um, I hope so. You're going to see some, like, pretty like dope synchronicities and alignments out there yeah mm-hmm. just stay open yeah yeah stay relaxed and allow yourself to feel safe yeah a lot of times things happen and we we pull in we collectivize yeah, yeah. instead of staying mm-hmm. lucid you know True. you know and, and it's fine once the once the thing is over you can let go again and yeah. feel yeah. safe feel safe again you know let oh, yourself God. expand yeah you know so now we gonna we gonna have to uh, have you back again to find out what Kenya look like. For sure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe you have links to a travel agent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know? I am the travel agent right now. Oh, for real? I booked everything. Okay. Yeah. All right, then then you set it up, and then we'll pay for our links through you. Yeah. yeah. For real. Right, right. And, and share I can some have money. A family. Yeah, totally. They, I was, I watch blogs a lot, so mm-hmm. you know, it's people going to Kenya and they're enjoying themselves, and they just telling you what to look out for. So I'm like, it's a good thing I have family there because when we do go to safari and stuff, I'll have them buy the tickets instead of them trying to charge me the American. Correct. Price. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's you know? hey, that's exactly what I'm getting. At. Exactly. Once you go, we're gonna come next because yeah. <laughs> we'll Boy, know somebody it out for us yeah because totally. yeah. i'm gonna be like yo they tried to charge us no <laughs> i'm from kenya i'm about to be having an accent and all that like hey what's up sister yeah totally <laughs> <You know? laughs> totally, totally. ride the wave you know you know ride it do nah. you think like um do you think when well when everything was going down did you raise your son out here in la or new york because i know you was living in new york yeah, so oh, he, wow. he is born. He's born in the Bronx. Okay. Um, the Boogie Down Bronx. Bronx. Baby. Boogie Down Bronx. The Bronx Boogie Down baby. Bronx. And we came here. We came back to L.A. So he he grew up in um, New York. Okay. We came back in L.A. 2019. And so he was three. So, yeah, he kind of got diagnosed probably the seventh month we were living out here in, in LA. LA. Okay. Yeah. So and um yeah. It was kinda like a blessing and a curse because I'm in New York. We're living in New York and it's all me. All my family is here. Mm-hmm. I'm born and raised in LA, California. I was out there with just me and his dad and so, you know, and I eventually end up moving back to L.A. because I used to come, me and my son used to come visit my parents, my mom, and my siblings here. Mm -hmm. And he used to just act like crazy, like just crying and screaming and like just stranger danger. And I'm like, 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 bruh, this is your family. Like, come on now. So I just decided to make that move back because I'm like, this is how I came up living with growing up with all my cousins and my siblings. You know, I'm not about to be crying. You know? Yeah. So I end up saying like I'm gonna move back, and then it just so happened that like months later, you know, he got diagnosed with that. So I think that if I would have been going through that, um, having that information, just going in New York, it would have just, you know, 
I don't think I'll be this way because I would have been just me and my son by myself. Yeah, family. isolated. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it was good to have my family and my friends support. Yeah, like nearby, yeah. not nearby. just when you're in another state. That's different. Yeah, definitely. And you know how on New York, you you don't have a, I didn't have a car there. So we're on the train. Yeah, you don't you need know, one. We're on a taxi. You don't need a car. When I had to take him to his um, treatments and stuff, this is early in the morning type thing, like five in the morning. So, mm-hmm. like, just being able to be here and my um, friends and family lending me a car because, you know, I haven't been out here much long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Finding out he was going through that and it helped me out a lot. Well, way more support. Way, yeah. Mm-hmm. I felt the support and it was really needed. Like, I don't know. It's just crazy how God works and his plans just align sometimes you know you have to be your eyes have to be open and you have to be willing to see and your heart gotta be open yeah because it's just easy to get distracted like you know but i don't have my son but i'm like but thank you for giving me those times where i was able to make him happy and provide for him and i was able to at least be there where my job gave me that time off Mm -hmm. you know i didn't have to you know like everything kind of provided for itself yeah it's how we've been taught about uh, our existence here, life and death. Yeah. We've been taught a certain finality that I don't believe we should be taught. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying you should believe heaven, hell, or any of that. I'm just saying that most of us have been given these concepts, yeah. but not necessarily to ease your mind. Mm-hmm. If these mm-hmm. concepts ease your heart and mind, fine. But if yeah. they make you more worrisome or you have more anxiety and fear, then I don't, that might not be the right concept for you. Yeah. You know, but you don't. What other concept do you pick? That's exactly. True. You know, because it looks like you've been. You know, there's only certain things to pick from. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, you give it. Yeah. Up. Like it's like the choices <laughs> is there, but that's not working for me. You yeah. know. So now you got to be. So within that framework, you got to be gentle with yourself. Yeah. yeah. You have to be gentle with yourself within that framework. It's a lot of grace. You know, and you you're gonna need that from your friends and family. Definitely, to, yeah. You know, and um, because you, as per, a person going through grief, you're not gonna always make the right decisions. Nah. You know, your your mind is not really there, so you need your family and friends to be like, you know, I understand, and yeah. you know, you need to get it together. You know, like this is not cool. You're going down the wrong path. Correct. You mm-hmm. know, so. You just need grace and you from do. yourself and your family and friends. No, definitely. Yeah, unconditional love from yourself, unconditional, too. Unconditional, yeah. And I think it's probably more important to give yourself grace than trying to look for grace from your friends and family because it's just true that they're going through other things with nah. raising their own kids or mm-hmm. probably their parents and things like that, their work, their school, whatever they're going through. It's best to... Um, look for that grace within yourself then from your support. No, totally. What if they're in a deficit? Yeah. yeah. So they can't, you they know? can't give it to you right now. And then you're sitting there, where's my grace? Where's my, <laughs> where's my grace? Come on, man. I'm, I came here for grace. <laughs> it's 6 p.m. Where's the grace? Yeah. You know, I got in line for grace. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and the person might not even know yeah. you're showing up for this. Yeah. Because you didn't officially tell them. Yeah. You yeah. just more than likely been getting from them. And it feels good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get today. Yeah. And it can't give it to you but all they, the time. But they don't have it today. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, nah, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you that, like, like you got to be your, your, your soulmate. Oh. You got to mm-hmm. be your lover. That way you got love to share. Yeah. Because if your love is coming from inside out, then you can always build it up again, irregardless of other people and circumstances. But if your love is coming from outside in, if any of them circumstances get interrupted, yeah. you might be a very hard person to live with. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, you might feel insufficient. You know. Yeah. A lot of people have, like, you know, take pride or put their love in outside things. But like you said, as soon as that cuts off, then they'll be like, I'm not worthy anymore. Yeah. Or, How do I find this? And you yeah. can't just find that instantly. No. Yeah. It's, so, it's in you already, really. But your mind might make you try and find it instantly. Yeah. I need to relieve pain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Another mistake just made. <laughs> Another mistake just made. You know, but but that is the part of it. Though. I don't I don't really like the word mistakes, but yeah. we'll say experiences instead. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. No. Okay. I, like I can do experiences. Yeah. Can I do a bathroom break? Yeah. We we, we could chop it now. Let's see where yeah. we at. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Because look at this big old tea. 
Yeah, we all good. Yes, we all good. Okay. Yeah. So was it was anyone you wanted to give a shout shout out to or you know? Um I just wanna give a shout out to I'm about to do some snoop shit. Go ahead. No, for <laughs> real. This, yeah, for real. I wanna give a shout out to myself because um I had to basically get my mind right to get through these this thing because I had to go through these experiences. I wanna give a shout out to my son, just um just by being happy and choosing happiness and choosing his life as a free young boy and like basically being strong through his treatments and stuff he was still able to go to school through his um, radiation treatments Mm -hmm. Just, just strong Mm-hmm. Like honestly, and all the doctors loved him, all his friends loved him, um, my friends and family loved him. Um, I just hope that he's okay up there, and that my grandparents are taking good care of him, like they took good care of me. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So that's my shout out. Just I just hope for, I just pray for peace, love, and just more blessings on top of what's going on in heaven definitely i just want to thank you for coming over here and being open enough to share your story with us Shakira. no problem and having definitely. an open a heart open mind and just coming here and sharing that sharing this with us and sharing this with the people not just with us but with the people correct to help a lot of others that's going through the same thing traveling through the same experience yeah that's real so we really appreciate you coming here and shedding light on it yeah. and it was a great life definitely I'm you, glad I'm able definitely. to be here and share with you guys. No, you painted a great picture. No, I mean, totally. Sure. Get, no, you did with your words and your poem was very compelling. I loved your poem. Thanks. Like, Thanks. No, I appreciate definitely. you being here. No, for real. Because this this is a this is a whole different episode for us. Yeah, yeah. no, it's totally. A totally different episode. For this us. is going to be different for the people. It's different. Yeah, because yeah, most yeah. people used to like bit, people coming on here as entrepreneurs and stuff, yeah. and all or artists, stuff. performing but artists coming on here just talking about real life. Yeah, this is this you know. Is real. Yeah, so um, we had to think about how to approach this today, and we both was like, let's let her tell us. Yeah, okay. and just you know, because normally we just ask questions, mm-hmm. but then we were like, "This is too compelling." Yeah, it's like for us to it, try and navigate it's it. It's such <laughs> it's a tremendous, tremendous yeah. story that <laughs> it was like, "Well, what kind of questions do you really like?" You can't be formatted, really. Yeah. Let's let it just be just whatever it's going to be, mm-hmm. and talk about whatever we're going to talk about. You know, yeah. that way it's organic. I'm, you know, I'm glad. I, I really feel open, and I'm. Glad that I'm able to just choose to come here today and just be open about this. You know, my son would be eight years old. Yeah, today. You know, eight years old now, and, and it's hard. You know, it's hard to even really see people with their kids and they're happy and and they're you know they have a chance to just experience life with their kids and just like. I don't want people to take that for granted because yeah. you know, it's it's really not up to us. It's up to God. You know, no matter how mm-hmm. much you do right or how much. Yeah, you that's do, not the that's not kid. the math. Yeah, it's, it's not, not the, the math. <laughs> it's not the math. It's not. They're not calculating off that. Yeah. Well, it's a greater math that needs to bring experiences in and and build greater love and resilience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who strength. who are you now in terms of loving compared to then? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So now nah, I feel your magic. <laughs> no, definitely. It's, it's been a lot to pass through, but you got it. Yeah. That part. That part. Now you totally received the strength to pass through it. And Did I that to keep, um, you know, keep getting there with life, and maybe in ten years and or five years, you know, maybe I can have another kid and and able to love them and give them. Um, that freedom, you know, to be themselves and well, not I know knowing you will, how because you're more be equipped. <laughs> yeah, you're more equipped. Yeah, yeah. You're more equipped. You're way more equipped now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's gonna be different. No, your mo- motherhood IQ now is off yeah. the chain, and, and your so. doc, your doctorate I- IQ. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's gonna be different. A doctor's yeah. not gonna love me, but you yeah, know, yeah. you gonna be to researching and looking. You like, nah, y'all check can really this. do this. Yeah. yeah, I could be doing this back. Now check this. Stand on that. Like, no, I just need it. I just need it. No, I just need it. Yeah, you know, you gotta have it. Stand on certain. Type of things. 
Yeah, they stand on business. Mm -hmm. With that being said, y'all, thank y'all for viewing Featured. We're going to close out. I'm your host with the most, Kush Tucker. I'm your host, Mike L. Remember, you saw it first on Featured. Let's go. I'm blowing chronic smoke in the wind. Going places you've never been, accumulating dividends. Mostly Benjamins. Bought a Ferrari just to shit on the Benz. Looking fresh and clean, hottest nigga on the scene. Don't any of you whack MCs. Go as hard as me, getting green. Pocket full of broccoli, extra cheese. Paparazzi trying to get a flick of me in the team. Every day my life a movie scene. You don't understand. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attention and your subscriptions. If you have a business or a service you would like to promote, or if you don't have one, you just want to come on the show and talk and be a guest on Featured, please DM us at Featured underscore guests on Instagram. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you. Peace and love.